Charmaine Jeffers in the building. Hey. All right, all right. All right, Charmaine Jeffers. Man, you, uh, you're the most controversial trucking guru slash trucking business person out there, man. So introduce yourself and let... For for myself, because this is my first time, you know, talking to you and meeting you. Go ahead and introduce yourself, okay. what you've been doing and what you bring to the trucking community. Awesome. Hey, Lockout. So, um, yeah, I would like to introduce myself for those who don't know me. It's Shemaine, without the R. It's Shemaine Jeffers. And I am not a trucking guru. <laughs> Some may see me as that, but I'm not. I was a truck driver. From 1998 to 2018, so 20 years, I put out on the road as a driver, uh, a pioneer, so to speak, uh, back when there was no automatic trucks for females and kicking down doors and the only females, female at my company, starting off dedicated lanes and running three, four logbooks, you know, real, real trucking back in the day. So I've been doing this for 20 years, um, mother of five practically raised my kids while being on the road and um I ventured off after I got out the truck in 2018 uh when Facebook started growing and had these Facebook groups people were just putting me in these Facebook trucking groups like you 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 that female out here you like you've been out here doing this you're a pioneer get in these trucking groups and I knew nothing about it and when they got me in the trucking groups um, I just started giving knowledge and information and people just started calling me boss lady and they gave me that title. So it's not self-titled. And I started helping people and I ended up starting my own group and it grew to over 50,000 members. And that group turned into a business uh, once I got off the truck. What's the name of the group Go ahead. for the people that don't know? The group, the group is CDL for life. And we turned that into a business in 2018 as well. Um, and so a lot of people don't know that group is not just a Facebook group, but it's a company as well. The LLC, it has benefits. Um, we offered all of our members, it's probably one of the only Facebook groups that had offered all their members like health, dental, uh, Aflac, uh, just a lot of stuff we were the pioneers of in this industry just to help truckers you know, get on their feet and and succeed, and we turned that into a business. CDL for Life on uh, on Facebook. Now, I did mention uh, Shemaine. I did mention uh, that uh, that CDL for Life was one of the largest trucking groups. I, I believe I said that you was the second largest trucking group. You said I was group. number two. Yeah, second <laughs> yeah. largest trucking group next to uh, next to. Uh, number two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's to uh No, but I will tell trucking. you, um, Sheree has been, yeah, she has been uh, a friend of mine for many years and actually was talking to Sheree before she ever even, you know, drove a truck and helping her and being a mentor. And when she set up She Trucking, she asked me if I could, you know, tell the members of CDL for Life to the females to join. And of course I did because we are black and we are women in a white male dominated industry, one. And so, of course, that was awesome for her to start a platform for female drivers, uh, no competition or nothing, just us, you know, united and helping each other. And of course, I told all the women to go and they should still go and join that platform because it's a great resource for women who are uh, getting in the industry and wanting to drive trucks. And our group is catered to all truck drivers, male, female, all nationalities and races. However, me being a black woman in this industry and accomplishing all that I have accomplished, I do heavily focus on building up our people and helping them to level up their income and change the way that we are perceived as blacks in America by leveling up their income in trucking. Um, is the quickest way I know to turn six figures and just change how we are perceived, how we look, and to change our numbers when they when they do the, 
the polls and they get the information and the statistics, they can see that we are now starting to change from a uh, low income middle class to upper middle class and rich. Put that coffee down. Shemaine. <laughs> Shemaine. Look, uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance because I That's beat okay. up people's my names would, all the time. Mom, my mom would be very, she hates when people put that R in there, but it's Shemaine, like Sh- Shemaine, but Shemaine. All right, so Shemaine, unfortunately, we can't speak on uh, the situation that uh, that you're involved uh, with uh, another person. So we won't speak on that, but right. you saw the video between me and my guest, and we talked about one yeah. of your ventures uh, being yes. truck biz in a box. So if you, if you would, because you came in the comment session and you know you spoke yes. on what the business was about if you would uh explain uh, what is exactly truck biz in the box okay so truck biz in the box is now 2 years old and but it's something that we've been doing since 20 2018 okay um i'm doing it personally And I will tell you, my elderly mom, who just turned 77 on the 12th, my elderly mom, back in 2018, her husband died and left her with nothing but $10,000 insurance policy. And since I was getting off the truck and I was working as an agent for a large company, and I said to my mom, I said, you know, she was panicking. She had no way to know how she was going to take care of her mortgage, how she was going to care for herself. He left her nothing but $10,000. And I said, Mom, at the time, in 2018, I said, if you give me just half of that, 5000 I will invest it in a truck. I can get the truck, and I will put a driver in the truck, and I'm going to run and manage that truck for you because at the time, my mom's not, you know, she's elderly. She's not able to manage a trucking company and the the social security isn't enough money you know and i said their five thousand dollar investment i'm going to get this truck put down on it i'm going to put the driver in it and i'm going to run it under our management team and i'm going to make sure we book the loads and we do all the paperwork and she didn't have to do anything but sit back and collect whatever profit the truck made Now, did it always make a profit? No, but we're talking about four weeks out of a month. If I was giving my mom $2,000, $3,000 a month, that was enough to supplement her after all her expenses were paid. It was enough to supplement her income after her husband died to pay her mortgage, to pay her car note, to have food and not be, you know, an older person who doesn't have her own social security built in just not be a person that's worried now, what am I going to do? How am I going to live? And once I did that and I posted the story, because I started telling people where to go get those $5,000 trucks from. That's how it started. And I told them what I did for my mom. And I got so many phone calls asking me, can you do this for my mom? Can you do this for my son? Can you do this for my kids that are in college? And we started out doing it the same way I did for my mom. I started out saying, yeah, here, call this dealership, tell them I sent you. They'll give you a truck, uh, 5000 down. I'll find you a driver from my group that I funneled drivers right from my group, put them in your truck, and run it. And we got over 300 people who went to that dealership and got trucks. Now, how many of those people actually came to me? <laughs> Not 300. So what people were doing was getting the trucks and going like Landstar or, or whatever. Let me see if I could get the get the gist of this. So this is more mm-hmm. of of you just referring people to these dealerships. It used to be. It oh, used to be. So okay. it started. It started that way. It started that way. And actually, with the young lady in question, that's how we met. It started that way. So I would say, hey go here and get a truck and then you can come to me and we'll put it onto the carrier I'm with and we'll manage it and we'll put a truck in it. So it started out as referrals, right? However, 
However, you have people who, like I said, over 300 people I referred, and these dealerships weren't paying me anything, right? They would give me a gift card at Christmas for, like, a steakhouse. That's all I got. And they weren't paying me anything for referring 300 people, right? And the people would get the trucks and go, oh, I got the truck for 5K down. I'm going to Landstar or whoever. And after a while, and people just taking up my time and phone calls, after a while, I said, you know what? I don't, I, I, I can do this differently. I don't have to refer them to dealerships because a lot of people kept calling me and saying, hey, what if I don't have the 5K? Or what if I don't have the credit? I don't meet the credit criteria, right? And so I felt like, dang, well, if you can't meet the credit criteria, what about if I get it with my business credit and you pay me? So we, I, I took this idea to a lawyer and I told the lawyer, I said, hey, this is what I've been doing. Is there a way to structure this where I can get the trucks using my business credit and this way they don't have to qualify credit wise and I can put the drivers in it, do what I'm doing, manage the trucks. Is there a way that we can do that? And my attorney said that he was very excited because this is one of the best ideas he's heard in trucking since he's been an attorney. And he did. He came up with my contract. So that contract that they signed is made by my attorney. I didn't make it. And of course, a lot of that stuff in there, a lot of that language is to protect our business because my name and my business is on the line. So I, I heard the guy speaking. He's like, she's building her credit with you. No, not at all. It's the opposite. My credit is on the line. So when you buy one of these trucks and you say, hey, I don't have, this truck didn't make no money this week. It was a holiday. Driver went home. There's no income. But there's a truck note due. You say, well, I ain't got it. I'm not paying you for this truck because I ain't got it. I got to pay my bills first. That goes on me. It still comes, ACH still comes right out of my bank account, no matter what. So that's why there's a lot of stuff in there in language that will protect us because now what do I do if somebody just takes the truck or somebody just don't pay their bills or and those bills add up on me? We have to do something about that. So we have to repo the trucks or we have to, you know, hit them up for that money. Or And at the end of the day, when, even though they just walk away, it doesn't go on their credit. So they don't have a negative thing going on their credit. And then we also added bonuses. We don't just get the trucks. We get the trucks, right? So we secure the truck is just a part of it because I'm not a truck dealership. I get the trucks through dealerships, right? So we get the trucks. We put the drivers in them. We manage the trucks. We also built a separate platform that, you know, I don't know if she spoke about it or anybody spoke about it. We built a separate platform just for all the investors. And the knowledge and the information in there is unbelievable, okay? Because I was one of the first people. Actually, I was the first trucker to ever create a membership site, right? A lot of people came in and did it after me. But that private site, they have all the information and resource to build a business credit. They have all the information and resource for business plan. They have all the information every day. They get the dispatch course that we offer for free. So there's a lot of benefits built into it. And unfortunately, go ahead. Oh, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of people don't you when you put resources just like in a platform, a lot of people is there, but they won't use it. So lots of times, you know, in these cases, I'm like, hey, but you have access to this. And they go, well, I didn't know. And I didn't see it. And I didn't do it. So they don't utilize those resources. But um, go ahead. You got any questions? That's how we got started. And that's what we, we offered. Truck bids in a box actually came from uh, your doing business with your mom after her uh, late husband passed. That, me helping her to supplement her income. So it was a way for her to supplement her income and still is to this day, right? It still is. I, I cut my mom a check every month. For people that, that might not understand that, I mean, I, I can understand family helping family in that part of, you know, part of the business. 
But mm-hmm. my, I, I guess, like, let's take me for example. Why, why, okay. would, why a person like me? Let's just say I didn't have uh, no trucking experience. I don't have no CDLs and something, nothing like that. And there's a lot of people that's that's out there. Uh, saying that you can be a trucking owner without CDLs. Why would I start a business with you, invest with you, and I don't have no, I, I don't have no knowledge about trucking at all. I don't have my CDLs. I don't, I, I, I don't know nothing about trucking at all. I'm just hearing that everybody's saying, hey, you could be a trucking owner without being a, a without being a owner, so to say. Why okay. would I, why so, would I or anybody else would do that? Right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Damn good coffee. And hot. Now, this is where the industry has gotten flooded with what you said, so-called trucking groups, right? And they are putting out, hey, you can come and make all this money in trucking and you don't need to know anything about trucking and you're going to get rich. Okay. That is a lot everywhere. I see the advertisements myself. Okay. Um, however, this is not what we do. This is, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not what we do. Um, so why would somebody like yourself? Because for instance, with my mom, she knows nothing about trucking, right? Except that her daughter drove trucks for 20 years. If you came to me, so a lot of people, and especially when I'm talking about um, coming from low-income families, not having the knowledge, the business education, I, I, I started an education center first, okay, to teach people more than just trucking because a lot of truckers, they can drive. You had to go to school to learn to drive, right, to get your CDL. You had to go to school. But then to just say, well, I drive, I'm going to now buy a truck and start a business with zero business plan, with not enough capital. A lot of them are undercapitalized. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the information. They didn't even take a business course. That is the only, this is the only industry that I really know that people will just go and, hey, I can drive a truck, so I'm just going to go buy one and start a business. That is very bad business, and that is leads for a cycle of failure, okay? Just because you work at McDonald's as a cashier doesn't mean you can go buy a McDonald's and run it efficiently or properly. So some education, some training is going to be provided by McDonald's if you did level up from that tier. So what we do is the same exact thing. We don't advertise you get rich quick. We advertise that you can either be hands on with this investment or you can be hands off. You don't have to, like my mom, she doesn't want anything to do with running it except for knowing what's going on with the truck, right? Um, But there's some people who want to do the dispatching for their truck. There's some people who want to learn the business from the ground up, and we teach them that. We give them those tools and those opportunities. So it's just a matter of what could you do with $5,000? When they was giving out all this money in 2020, think about it. I told everybody, you could take who can't get their hands on 5K. And if you can't think about teaming up with somebody, get your hands on 5K and flip it. And this is a way for you to invest in a business. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I can't cook. And I would love to have a restaurant, but I know nothing. I know zero about the restaurant business. But if there was somebody out there offering a turnkey restaurant business with the recipes of basically like a franchise, would you buy into a franchise? Of course, that they've been around for years. That's why I said, this isn't a new model, business model. It's an old business model, but we just took it to trucking. So many people heard, oh, there's money in trucking, so they're interested. And a lot of them are going out on their own, which which is why the market is the way it is, because they're flooding the market when it, things were good, right? A lot of them are just going out on their own, and they're failing. And they're failing because they have no knowledge. I just told you I've been driving since 1998. So we have, we're have we going on 26 years of experience as a driver, as a business owner, as a fleet owner. I do the commercials for DAT. Um, we have a huge network. So why would you get in business with me? Because, one, my network is large. 
If you go, if you log on to DAT right now, the largest low board, and you scroll to the bottom of the front of their page, you're going to see a video of me and you're going to see my face in a, in a quote, right? Because I've seen that, that, I, now, I've seen that yeah. video. Yeah. So if I have a network and in my group, now in my group alone, we got, we got NBC reporters, we got CEOs, we got all, so many people. That's why I don't allow the negativity, right? Because my job is to help truckers grow. NBC just did a, a whole special on the nightly news with a young lady that I referred to the reporter that came to our group. And this is bigger. This is bigger than a lot of the nonsense. And a lot of us take the social media. It's entertaining. It's fun. You know, we we joke around. And before I, you know, when I was just in the truck, I had the same mentality. I want entertainment. I'm getting on social media. But I switched lanes because I seen the business opportunity and I seen how many people I could help. So with that being said, is everybody happy they're not? Because when we started Truck Biz in a Box, the <laughs> we were doing really good. The market was still great. We were seeing profit margins after paying everything about $2,000 a week. That is not what it is right now. You say Truck Biz in the Box is what, three years old now? This is what, 2023? It's two. Oh, it's two, two years old? Okay, I'm sorry. So mm-hmm. you, you yeah, actually. Started 21. So you started this like right around the pandemic, pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. Right after the pandemic in 21, and we were in that boom of getting money with the drivers in the trucks. Let me use that little space right there. So everything was great. Okay. Everything was yeah. great. Everybody was making money. Everybody was getting money. But now trucking sort of kind of got back to the way it was before the pandemic. Now it's kind of tapered off. Uh, rates are taking the dive Fuel is now in the stratosphere. Hell, I just got finished paying six dollars in PA for fuel. Like, wow. Yes. Crazy. So now, <laughs> so now that uh, everything's back, pretty much back to normal. Uh, you guys is pretty much taking a hit, I guess. And for the people that's invested, is kind of feeling some kind of way about that. You think? Like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm mm-hmm. not, uh, I'm not making as much money as I was making. Now, uh, uh, w- what you gonna do mm-hmm. about it? You, you seeing mm-hmm. all that backlash now? As far as oh yes, as far oh, as yes, people, you know, getting in their feelings about it. How how do you Absolutely. handle that? Oh, have I got your attention now? Good. Absolutely. So this is how we handle it. First and foremost, I I don't control the market. I had no idea when the market was going to, you know, what it was going to do, how it's going to be. And I still don't. So people ask me all the time, well, when will we, when will the market get better? I don't know. I can't give you that answer, Um, but it's coming, right? When is it coming? I I can't give you that answer. So what we had to do with anything um, to survive, I'm in survival mode and I have been. And when I got into survival mode, when I seen the rates were dropping, I, you know, advised everybody, hey, these rates are dropping. This is not looking good. Let's see what fourth quarter does around the holidays. And when that didn't improve, it was like, okay, we're in trouble because things are getting worse and fuel is getting higher. And then the major thing that happened was, and I don't know if you remember this, when the chips and the parts for the cars and the trucks were stuck on containers or not being available. And so that's made new trucks slow down their production and it made the prices on used trucks. I mean, used trucks were like gold. It doubled, right? Because you couldn't get a new truck. All the fleets couldn't get their new trucks in. And so those used trucks, those prices went sky high. Right. So we had to go along with the market. Our prices went up because the trucks went up. Now the trucks are back down low. You can get trucks for the low right now because the market is trash. And what I had to do was I had to utilize that network I just told you about. I had to utilize networking with all the brokers, with everybody that I know in the industry that knows me and say, hey, this is what this is where we are. How can how are you guys surviving and how can you help us survive? And it came down to plain and simple, the the most companies that are surviving right now have contracted freight. 
And so we had to get contracted freight. And so three ways I offset or I've learned to maneuver around these obstacles is one, we got some contracted freight. Two, which is paying us better than market rates right now on the load boards. All of our contracted freight pays over $3 a mile, right? So that's keeping us where we needed to be, especially with this, the fuel still being high, right? And besides the contracted freight, we started hiring teams. I started convincing people, this is the market for you to team up with somebody. And we gave incentives because most people don't want to have somebody else in their space and their truck. So we gave incentives. If you team with us for six months, we will give you a two truck fleet each. That's four trucks for the team. So if your husband and wife, you now have a four truck fleet in six months, right? And we did the same for our solo drivers. If you drove for us for a year, you're going to end up with two trucks at the end of the year, plus mentorship, plus us helping you build your business credit so that you can even get more equipment, uh, box trucks, sprinter vans, just based on your business credit. And so I tell everybody the key to being successful when I got off that truck, the way that I changed my life when I got off the road was to when I had three trucks. When I had three trucks, that was a game changer. One truck being a one truck owner operator, it was a circle. You just one truck owner operator, your truck's breaking down, you're fixing it, you're going home, you're getting in a hole, you're in the negative. A lot of people, we are caught up in that cycle. You lease a truck from a company, now you're behind, you didn't have a good week, and you got to pay your house bills, and you end up losing your lease. Once I had three trucks, it was the opposite. It was a game changer. Those, uh, if one truck was down, the other two was carrying it. So now we just promote getting a fleet. Okay. Helping when I had when you get a fleet, I don't want you to get one truck because I know you're going to be coming out of pocket from time to time. I want you to get a fleet, whether it's a mixture, because you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now that semis is down, my box trucks and my sprinter vans is doing more than the semi trucks. Because, and then there's times when the box trucks ain't making no money or the sprinter's not making no money. But if you have a mixture in your fleet, right now, the box trucks and sprinter vans have way less overhead. It's less on fuel. It's less wear and tear on maintenance. And you're paying the drivers less. And you and you don't have a hard time finding drivers because they don't need a CDL. So we have a mixture of what we're doing to help you. That's why I said it's all business. It's a whole learning experience in for somebody like yourself who came and said, well, I don't have any knowledge, you know, if that was the case. If you said, I don't have any knowledge, how, why would I come to you? Because, one, we're business management. That's all we are. Every big company you know has a management, has a vice president, has a management team, somebody to run and operate that business and to be accountable. So we are also being accountable, but we're trying to get you through this market still let you see a profit. So now they're not seeing $2,000 a week, but they may see 500. That's still $2,000 profit a, a month. I tell them, even if you see $200, you didn't work for that. Even if you see $200 a week, it's $800 a month. That pays your car note probably. And you didn't work for that. So it's still a good investment, better than some other investments like real estate right now and, and, and doing rentals, you know? So I tell people, Trucking isn't going nowhere. It's still a billion-dollar billion industries, $800 billion. That money is there. You just have to attack it from a different level, a different angle, not from the angle of being a one-truck driver on an operator because they're failing. And they're not going to be where they want to be if they're dreaming about stepping up to you know higher levels. You definitely have to look at a broader, bigger picture. Let's talk about feelings about mm -hmm. uh, about what you're you're bringing to uh, to these people. Uh, of course, okay. uh, controversy has arise. It it arises yes. in in every businesses. Uh, yes. Not too many people are happy with you. Um, okay. So let's say for the people that did invest uh, back mm -hmm. then, um, and now you know, times change the amount of money that they invested. Now you said yourself on your, um, on your platform that you have different yeah. 
you know, you have different tiers. You have a low tier. Mm -hmm. You have a a mid-tier and a high tier. So for the people that invested in those tiers, and let's just say they, you know, didn't work out or anything like that, why not okay. why not just have them to ha- uh, have them to have the ability to, to to bail out like let's say let's say i i i probably will understand that you probably might not could give the full investment back because you can you can you you have to use that money for pieces parts and stuff like that but why not right. just give half or maybe a quarter of the investment of the investment back to the people that are that are unhappy with uh the situation uh that's unhappy with the conditions of trucking right now i'm glad you asked that question because we have offered them several solutions okay we offer them a way out plenty of ways out um you know like i said my wheels are constantly turning we're constantly thinking of how to maneuver in this market Okay. And so we gave them options. And so that's why people need to think about it. Nobody waited two years. You have their money and they just waited two years. And now they're just like, Hey, I haven't heard from this lady in two years and she took my money. No, not that kind of money. They've been in communication and they've heard from me. And constantly we asked on videos, right? So I have video recordings. We say, Hey, this is the market. This is the fuel. This is what's going on. Here's some actual settlements so you can see if. Anybody went into the negative or if they're in the positive. And what do you want to do? Do you want to put your truck out here in this market? Or do you want to wait to see if the market would get better? Many of them opted to wait. Some of them opted to sell. We were like, well, you can always sell your package because we have investors who are not undercapitalized. They have the capital and they are able to sustain their business financially and they will be able to buy your package. And so we have sold many of the investors packages because they're some of them were like, hey, I, I, for instance, I had a guy. He was an investor and a driver and he was driving his own truck. He was making decent money because he didn't have to pay a driver. And his little girl got ran over, a little 11 year old got ran over, hit and run by a car. And he called me and he said, I need to sell my package ASAP. He said, I need to go home and help my daughter with physical therapy. Me and my wife are going through it. I need this truck sold in 30 days to go home and help. And I went in the group, in the private platform, and I said to you guys first, I'm offering this guy needs to sell his package because this will happen. And one of the investors bought his package out and he got his 20 grand. Okay. And he was able to go home with his daughter. And then after, I think it's been about seven months later, He's hitting me up and ready for new opportunities because he's ready to get back on the road. Um, so we he's just one example. So they have the option to sell their package. Now, remind you, some of them bought those packages at the peak of when those prices for used trucks had doubled. And so getting them the same rate, yesterday's prices, ain't today's prices. So we all know you can't get that. And so some some people have sold their package for less than what, they originally purchased it for just because they needed to get some capital and they needed some money. And others have said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I know trucking is going to turn around and I'm going to wait. And the other options we offered even to, you know, some of the clients who are angry, we we offered them. We said, what about upgrading? Because we started with one dealership, the one I, I told you I sent 300 people with. We now have multiple different dealerships we get our trucks from so we have different options now and we're telling them look we can put you in newer trucks now we can put you in newer trucks you don't have the make the maintenance worry because you you got factory warranty so that takes away a headache and it's better fuel mileage so that's going to offset and then we can put a team in it because i would only put teams in those new trucks right and so we're giving them several options hey some of them are like, yeah, I'll take the new truck and I'll take the team. But you have some people, it's not just trucking. The economy is bad right now. So you have some people that are just like, I'm desperate for money. I need money. My money's tied up in truck business box. I want my money back. And it's not possible to, one, because the contract is non-refundable. And I said, like, my attorney did this because 
we have, like you said, there's a lot of moving parts to this. We have to advertise for drivers. We have to put money down on these trucks to get them ordered. And then we have to, you know, facilitate all of the stuff that we do as far as helping them and building their business credit. And we set up their, we set up their LLC. That's not free. So for anybody to ask for a hundred percent refund is absurd because there's money that's been spent. There's time that has been taken up. And not only that, you're right. My attorney has also said to such clients that have complained, we're willing, we're willing to give you back something, but you will not get a hundred percent. It just doesn't make sense that they would even ask for a hundred percent back or what we offer them the opportunity. Your truck is here. You can have a truck on the road ASAP in different contracts. I just told you we got contracted freight now, right? We got flatbed trucks. We got drive van, we got reefer, and we got contracts, and they're making over $3 a mile. So these guys would see some kind of return if you over a year's time. And a lot of them are just scared of the market. They're scared of what they see or what they hear. And so they're like, well, no, nah, I don't want I don't want my truck. So they're actually saying they don't want to take their truck, some of these people. Others are taking their truck and they're happy. Hey, coffee is the number one drink in the world. Everybody drinks it. Even little kids in Mexico drink coffee. Well, I'm not a little kid in Mexico. Let me touch on the the no refund. Why I I, mm-hmm. I know there's a reason. I, I know it's mm-hmm. written in the you know in the fine print. You know it's unfortunate that a lot of us don't read the fine print. <laughs> but why why is it no refund? Like why why oh. I I know you said that your lawyer uh make you know documented the paperwork and everything, but. Mm-hmm. Being that you are, you know, the overseer, why yeah. not give why not give a refund and just let problems be gone? Good question again. Um, and I love the answer to that. So there's like I said, there's a reason for the no refund, right? But however, the refund there is a refund period. The refund period is two weeks, fourteen days. They are aware of that in the beginning, and we have refunded many people within that 14 days, okay? That 14 days is for them to take that 28-page contract to an attorney, and we advise them, take it to an attorney, because it has to be notarized. It has to be notarized because we are their management company, and we need to be able to manage those trucks. Um, Because we have to manage those trucks, we also tell them, Take this to your attorney, get it looked over. You got 14 days to say, I'm not going to sign this contract and I like my refund. Or once you sign that contract, then it's non-refundable. And many of them have taken it to their lawyers, to their attorneys, and, and then turned right around and said, okay, I'm going to sign this contract. I got it notarized. Here you go. So they're aware of the no refund policy. And the reason it's in there, like I said, in order for us to order trust, we have to put something down. And those dealerships are no refund. So that's why we had to be no refund, okay? Because I can't go to any of those dealerships that we put the money down on and say, hey, I ordered a truck, but I need that money back because they won't give it to us. So if they're not going to give us back that money, how can we give them the money? And so the only other option would be to let them do what I was doing in the beginning, tell them where to go get these trucks from and let them go get it on their own and deal directly with the dealerships. Because it's been a real, me trying to help people has really turned into people taking advantage of this situation, okay? Because now if we put money down on dealership, am I supposed to lose that money? Um, No, I can't. But there's a truck there. And I tell them, well, you have a truck on order. Do you want to sell it? We can sell it to somebody else. This is what you can do. This is an option, or you can put it on the road. Why not, if you invested 15000 why not put that truck on the road? Within six months, you know you're going to have that 15000 plus back. That's just common sense, if you know anything about business. So why not put the truck on the road and make the money, or put it on the road and still put it up for sale at the same time? Who wouldn't buy a truck that already has a driver on a contract at freight and already making money? So you can still, they have many options. They're just not opting to take those options. And then you have social media. I'm a black woman. 
who's leveled up in this industry pretty quickly. I was just driving trucks for 20 years. In 2018, I got off of the truck, and here we are leveled up to seven figures, not six. Okay? And so I'm a black woman in this industry that is mostly male-dominated. Women only make up 8% or less than 8% of trucking. And you have a black female who has dominated, came through making this money and was making this money before Truck Biz in the Box, making seven figures before Truck Biz in the Box. And you have, so I have a lot of people that are just a lot of guys, a lot of women who see this and they are not happy about it. And the first thing our people like to yell is scam. Scam. Scam is when you offer somebody something and you don't give them what you offer. Let's let's they touch have, on let's touch on that yeah, for a second. That we, we, let's, let's touch on that. <laughs> let's touch on that for a second. So, what mm -hmm. do you say to people? What do you say to people that that sees this this business opportunity that you that you created? Uh, you you built it with a with a few close people. You got it out mm -hmm. there, and now. Uh, now people outside people sees this as a, as just another opportunity to take advantage of people what do you say right. to pe what do you say to people that thinks that i say this since i've started that idea and i've patented our our name is trademark right and since we started that idea there's been seven different companies that have copied me and none of them are minor or black and no one is saying anything. And not only that, they're charging $85,000. They're charging crazy amount of money. And they're making false promises of how much money they're promising you. And nobody's saying anything about that. Nobody, nobody's mentioning these companies. They advertise on the regular of turnkey automation and it's they started and, and most and those guys called me for information on how I did my business and and just copied it that's Amer that's capitalism that's America right but nobody is attacking these white male or Hispanic businesses that copied and are doing what I'm doing and not doing it as good as I'm doing it they don't have the connections I have they don't have the contracts I have they're not doing it I, I did this to help my mom, and I'm doing this to help people. I don't I don't advertise as frequently as these people do because I have several businesses, and that one is not my main bread and butter, and it's not my main focus. This was something I was doing because I'm good at. I'm good at managing trucking. I'm good at uh, helping people to be successful in trucking, and so we took on a limited amount of clients. I and to see these people doing it on a much larger scale, I don't see anybody attacking them. But this is our people. You know, the same very people that I help, black people, our people, those are majority of my customers because I made it affordable. We weren't born with silver spoons. Most of us don't even have good credit. Uh, not all of us, but a lot of us. And for me to offer them this opportunity, no credit check, being able to get a truck, a hundred, we're talking $180,000 brand new truck. Some of them are 280000 These Volvo 860s, brand new, I get them. You can't go into the dealership with bad credit and they're going to co-sign for you a, a brand new $200,000 truck. But Shemaine Jeffers was. And those other minor, uh, people, not non-minorities, aren't doing that. You got to have good credit. You got to come with a lot of money. So I offered our people an opportunity, and it was very disappointing to see how, you know, I've been helping drivers for years. Even the very people that are turning around and attacking me, I actually help those people. And they are, you know, you can't please everybody. It's one, it's business. Two, um, I know the reason I do it, and I know that we're doing everything that we can to survive this market and the same thing I do for myself and my trucks is what I'm doing for these people. So uh, I can't, I can't make everybody happy. Yeah. You, you, you write about that. You, you, and you're not, you're, you're not going to make everybody happy. No. And I'm a, I'm a woman and I just wanted to come on this show and explain, you know, I don't have to owe anybody any explanation, no, but, you don't. Because, but I do appreciate because it. I have a, 
No, and I appreciate you having me. I just I've I've had a passion for trucking my whole life. I'm a woman with five children. And I, I started driving. My daughter was three months old. And my youngest daughter was three months old. All my kids know is mommy's truck driver. And so for me to be <laughs> me to be this woman in this industry, black, and to be able to offer them opportunities and even help people who have kids and let them take their kids on a truck just because I know I had to sneak and take my kids on a truck. I, I'm I'm opening doors that they don't realize I'm opening for them. And they're trying to close them without any resolve. We're here to resolve anything with any of our clients um, to the best of the ability, but a lot of people aren't out for resolve. They're more out for entertainment on social media and getting famous off my name. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Shemaine, are you... How can, how can I say this? You, you, you invested in so many people and mm -hmm. throughout through throughout the people that you invested with you know a handful of them are are coming back after you feeling some kind of way correct are correct. you it's a handful are you afraid that that might hinder your credit because you as you said before your 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 credit is on the line your 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 business credit is on the line because you're using your business credit to you know give these people opportunities for these mm -hmm. uh for these 100k trucks now that you got a handful of people that's coming back after you now you're responsible your credit is responsible mm -hmm. for those trucks uh your yeah. your your how can i say your name is kind of mm -hmm. is is kind of going on a downslide with with some of these key people that you need uh, to continue business with, or are, are you mm -hmm. afraid? Are you afraid of all of that? Uh, that that's going to hit you rock bottom. Aren't, aren't you afraid of I'm that? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not afraid of it because with business, with any business, is going to come a lot of trials and tribulations, right? And hopefully, we learn from them, we revise things, and we do better. Um, so yes, in in 2022. I went over $350,000 in debt out of my own money, covering a lot of investors. When their trucks broke down, we're talking about some of these repair bills got up to 20 grand and they didn't have it. And so I still got to pay on these trucks. So I had to fix them. And so I went tremendously in debt trying to carry a lot of investors until it was like, no, we have to figure something else out. We have to make sure that they, even though they come in with no credit check, they have to have escrow deposits. They have to at least have 5K on hand to take care of maintenance. And if, and if it's more than 5K, I can match it. But I can't just cover the whole entire bill. So, yeah, um, a lot of this has been, like I said, it was a new venture in 2021. A lot of this has been learning and adjusting and trying to maneuver. But I know for a fact that we've done really well at um, securing some contracts and now putting people in a good position and getting uh, newer trucks so we don't have to worry about those maintenance bills. A lot of it is I'm not afraid. One, I'm not afraid because it's business and you don't know how well you're going to do in any business, but you have to get out here and you have to hustle it and you have to try to maneuver through obstacles and make it happen. And that's what that's why we are a management team. I'm here. I have a key. It's not just me. I have a key group of people, educated, um, experienced in the in the business, in the industry that help us organize ways to survive. When you have major companies going out of business, I'm talking about billion dollar companies going out of business right now. So I'm really proud of the fact that I'm able to still hang in there and have these trucks running and have these contracts and able to still help people the best that we can. And then if we know the market's going to get better. And when it does, everybody's going to be back knocking on my door. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, Shemaine. <laughs> Truck bids in the box. Your all-in-one trucking credentials. Um, are you are are you going to continue with everything that's going on and with everything that has been going on with truck bids in the box? Are you going to continue 
truck beds in the box. Absolutely. As my when you have an attorney tell you that this is he's never been excited about an idea or a client this excited about something, um, he told me this was gonna be big. And it is because it changes trucking. And I think that's what a lot of people are scared of. They're scared because I'm changing trucking. I just told you about seven companies uh, copied me, right? So if you got somebody copying your business and they're doing it and they're making money off of it, it's an idea that is good, but doesn't mean that everybody should be doing it, okay? It's a great idea because it puts people hands-on. But again, when you... Buying the truck business in the box, you're buying into Shemaine Jeffers and her management team, our expertise to handle your business. If you buy into somebody else, you're buying into what they got going on. Some of those guys never drove a truck. They're advertising stuff, never drove a truck, nothing to do with trucking. They just seen, they're business people that just seen an opportunity to get in here and do this and take advantage. We're actually, I'm very, if you can tell, I'm very passionate about trucking. It has provided for me. It has taken me out of the hood. I'm from Coney Island, Brooklyn. It has taken me all over the U.S. and provided for me and my my five kids. So I'm very passionate about trucking. I'm very passionate about the drivers who work for us and our investors. I'm here to educate them, to teach them what I know. That took me 20 years to figure out driving trucks and learning and learning and learning. So they're not on their own. They're not starting from scratch. Why start from scratch and trying to figure out and make mistakes when you can have a professional man? That's what that's what a management team does for your business. And that's what I do. So, yes, we're going to continue truck business in the box. Um, but we're doing other things as well. Like I said, we've opened it up to box trucks, Sprinter vans. Because we want people to be able to be versatile in what they're investing in and what they just don't have all their eggs in one basket. Because as we see, the mar- and we knew this already, the trucking, trucking goes up and down. It has been since I've been in it. Um, we knew this. And you never know when it's going to happen. So you just have to be versatile. And that's what we're doing with the semi. We have the flatbed, the semi, I mean, the drive-ins, the reefer. And then, you know, we just opened up the other levels of... Um, fleets with the Sprinter vans and the box trucks. So yes, I will continue doing this business for a very long time. It's a legacy. And I'm definitely not going to let other companies just take over my uh, original idea and original thought process to put to put this business model to trucking. Uh, one last question before we get out of here, and I really do appreciate you giving me the time and, and chopping it up with me, man. I mean, that's I, you yes. know, I'm just sitting back and, and listening and, and learning. You know, that's that's what, I'm, I, that's what I'm doing. Our favorite Korean's getting robbed right now. You serious? First he tells me his wife has the flu. Oh man, that bitch would work if she was dead. Then he gives me the coffee for free. Shit. He is getting robbed. How do you want to play it? You uh and I appreciate you having me on. I just felt like and I you know, and I listened to the podcast and it was entertaining. I you know, I was like, ooh. <laughs> But I was a little upset, too, but because I was like, you guys don't know me. You don't know my background. You don't know my history. Mm -hmm. My father was one of the first Tuskegee Airmen and a colonel in the Air Force and also a civil rights attorney. And uh, he was the publicist to Martin Luther King. His letter to Martin Luther King sits in the King Library, and I could have went to Tuskegee University for free. I grew up going to lunch with Jesse Jackson. Okay. Um. Yes, so I'm very pro-black. I'm very for the movement. And so when I hear or see all of this stuff, I'm 53, so I'm, I'm in another era. But I see a lot of people that are half my age that are hating. They're hating. They don't know, understand the struggle. They don't understand what it took, the hard work it took for me to even get here. That This, is, this doesn't just happen overnight. And they don't see that part. They only see the easy part. They see what I show them on social media. Most pe- most of us do. And so I just wanted the opportunity to explain who I am, why I'm doing this, because I'm doing my part and I'm making my changes the way that I know how. I know this trucking and I know the money is there. And I'm just trying to teach and educate and get our people to understand that and level up. But a lot of us don't have patience. A lot of us have a scam mentality. 
when you are a scammer yourself, you're going to look at everybody as a scam because you are, you know, and a lot of people are just not trusting of each other. And a lot of this just, it needs to be stopped some kind of way. And I know I'm just one woman and I'm not going to stop it. But what I am going to do is keep showing and doing and proving because that's me doing my part. So I appreciate the opportunity just to say that. And I'm still going to have haters after this. They're still going to get on here and talk. And it's fine. But I'm still going to have a bunch of people that support me as well and that want the help that I'm giving. Big G's got it locked. Why? 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 Why?